Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Cassandra. Today I'm going to take you through a full body toning vinyasa flow practice. So an intermediate level class. You can expect some core work. We're really gonna work on inner thighs as well and shoulders and upper back. So I'm not using any props for this practice, but if you have blocks at home, always a good idea to have them somewhere close by just in case you need them. And we're gonna start lying down on our backs. So laying all the way down might feel good just to stretch out arms overhead, get really long fingertips from the toes, and then gather the energy back in, maybe taking reclined butterfly just for a few breaths here. Using this first pose to check in with your breath rhythm. Try to soften your shoulders away from your ears. Soften your facial muscles. Just check in to see how your body feels today. Take some big breaths, sending them all the way down to your low belly and lower back. Letting the inhale be just as long as the exhale. And let's bring the knees back in towards one another. You're gonna draw your right knee in towards your chest and stretch out your left leg out in front of you. Try to push into that left heel as you draw the right thigh in a little bit closer. Keep your shoulders on the floor. And I like to just sway the right knee a little bit side to side. Checking in with the hip flexors, we will be strengthening our hip flexors quite a bit. So it helps to lengthen them first. And let's find a twist. So cross your right knee over to the left. You can use your left hand to help this motion along. Reach your right arm out to the side. As you inhale, come all the way back to center and let's straighten the right leg up towards the sky. And you might just hold on to the back of the hamstrings or up towards the calf or the ankle. And you can bend and straighten the leg here, just checking into the hamstring, seeing how the back of that leg is feeling, if there's any tightness or tension. And I like to point and flex the foot. You might notice that it's quite tight there, especially if you wear uh, high heels a lot. And now point through both feet. You're going to curl head and shoulders off the mat as if you were going to bring your forehead to touch towards your knee and see if you can hover that left leg just a few inches off the floor. So push your lower back down into the mat, draw your navel in, curl up a tiny bit higher and stay exactly as you are, but your arms are either going to reach towards that left foot or you can make this a little bit harder for yourself by extending your arms up overhead but keep trying to split the legs open away from one another. Take one more big breath wherever you are and both knees come in towards the belly, release head and shoulders back down to the floor. Let's switch sides. So keep the left knee where it is and straighten your right leg out in front of you, pushing into your right heel. And again, maybe just swaying a little bit side to side. You might notice a difference from one side to the other. We'll carry it over into a twist so your left knee crosses over your body towards the right side of your mat and your left arm can extend out to the side. Try to keep your chest facing up, just stretching to the outer glute getting some motion and mobility through the spine with these twists. Slow, steady breaths. Inhale back to center. Let's stretch into the hamstrings. So left leg goes up towards the ceiling 
and hold on to whatever works for you here. And again, you might feel good bending and straightening that leg a little bit, maybe flexing and pointing through the foot. It's normal for one leg to feel a lot tighter than the other. And now pointing through both feet, curl head and shoulders off the mat. So squeeze through the abdominals and lift the right foot a few inches off the floor. So keep trying to pull and draw your left thigh in closer towards you and choose where you'd like to bring your arms, either reaching towards the right foot or extending up overhead. So split the legs further away from one another, point into the toes, reach, extend a little longer, inhale. And knees come in, exhale, lower all the way back down, feet flat to the mat, take your bridge pose, push into the heels, curl tailbone up, lift your hips, low back and mid back off the floor. Squeeze into the glutes, keep your knees hugging into the midline so that they don't splay open towards the little toes. And curl back down nice and slow, inch by inch, until the hips come back down to the mat. And let's rock up to take a seat. I'm gonna come into half butterfly or like a head to knee pose. So extend your right leg out, keep your left foot in towards the inner groin. Coming into a side bend here, you can slide your right hand down your leg, left arm extends up and all the way over. Think of rolling your left shoulder back. Inhale, lift back up, left hand down, baby wild thing, reach your right arm up and back. Pressing open through your hip and set your hips down. You're gonna turn so that your chest faces over towards that right leg. So really working on strengthening the hip flexors, you're gonna place your fingertips and your hands on either side of that right leg. And without leaning back, see if you can point through those right toes and then pick up the leg. So you're really gonna feel the hip flexors work and then drop it back down. So try not to lean back as the leg comes up. We're gonna do five more like this. Inhale and exhale, four more. Squeeze, three, two, pull the belly in, last one, one, and release. So you should feel that. Let's bend into the right knee and we'll go to the other side. Left leg extends out. Start with a side bend, so left hand moves down, right arm goes all the way up and over, roll your right shoulder down and away from your ear. Lift up to your baby wild thing, right hand down, left arm stretches up and back as you push into your hips. It's a little bit of a back bend. And as your hips come back down, we're gonna face the chest over towards the left thigh and frame that front leg with your palms. Point through the left toes, it does make a bit of a difference and helps a little bit here. Squeeze and engage through your abdominals to pick up that left leg as high as you can get it and then drop it back down. And we're gonna do that five more times. Inhale up, exhale to lower. Inhale, lift, lower down, three more, squeeze, release, two more, inhale, and exhale. Last one, inhale up, and release, cross at the ankles. Let's find tabletop pose on hands and knees. Palms underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips, just cat and cow as you inhale, drop your belly, lift the gaze, curl tailbone up. Exhale, round and contract, chin to chest. Take a few more here, go at your own pace. Think of opening through your chest and getting rid of any aches and pains in the low back. And we'll make our way to our first downward facing dog. So you might need to move your hands a couple inches past your shoulders, curl your toes under and lift your hips up and back. So feet are hip width distance apart, palms are shoulder width distance apart. And go ahead and bend your right knee as much as you can and push into your left heel. So stretching into the calf, the ankle, to the hamstrings, and then switch sides, bend your left knee, push into your right heel. Keep your arms long here, even though we're focusing on lower body. Maintain the alignment through your spine, through your arms. 
find your neutral downward facing dog, three-legged dog, right leg rises up to the sky, bend your right knee and open up that hip. So try to get your right knee to point up towards the ceiling. Get your knee to be as high as you can get it by keeping the elbow straight. Straighten and square that right leg and as you exhale, tap your knee to your nose, come forward into your plank pose. Inhale, three-legged dog, extend twice more like this. Exhale, squeeze it in, shoulders over your wrists. Inhale, reach it back. Exhale, squeeze, and you're going to step that foot all the way through. Lower the back knee down to the mat. So low lunge, feet are hip width distance apart. Push into the feet as you lift on up. So after those little hip strengthening drills, should feel good to take a low lunge. Think of reaching your tailbone down and pushing the hips forward and down. As the arms extend up, we're gonna cactus shape the arms. So bend your elbows, squeeze your shoulder blades behind you as you lift up through the heart. So a little bit of a back bend. Not jamming in our lower back here. We're really thinking of lengthening and opening through the upper part of the spine. Keep your elbows up lifted, inhale. And exhale, fingertips come down. You're gonna shift your weight back as you straighten the left leg, or sorry, straighten the right leg. Curl the toes towards you and hinge forward as you fold. Getting deeper into your hamstrings. Lift the chest up a little bit. Point your right toes forward, squeeze into the glutes, and just like what we did seated, See if you can pick up that right foot from off the floor and release it back down. Bend into the front knee, taking a little vinyasa. Inhale to plank pose. Exhale, chaturanga all the way to the floor. Point your toes back, three baby cobras. Inhale, upper body lift, squeeze your shoulder blades back. Exhale to lower. Inhale, lift up, so cactus arms, just like in low lunge. Exhale, down. Last one, inhale lift and release palms down to the mat downward facing dog let's make our way to the other side left leg rises bend your left knee open up your hip so again you're trying to get your knee to point up towards the ceiling almost as if your left heel was going to touch your seat both elbows are straight straighten and square the left leg breathe in deeply Exhale, knee to nose, shoulders over your wrists. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, squeeze, contract. Inhale, extend it up and back. Squeeze it in, look past your palms and step the foot through, low lunge, so the back knee comes down to the mat. You can push down into your feet in order to lift up. Cactus shape again here. So bending the elbows, imagine you're squeezing a little pencil in between your shoulder blades and maybe shifting your gaze up. Think of lifting out of your lower back, pulling the navel in, reaching your tailbone down. Release fingertips to the floor, shift your weight back. Straighten the left leg, flex through your left toes and fold in. Trying to get your forehead to the shin. Flat back, come up a little bit higher onto your fingertips. Point your left toes forward and see if you're able to pick up the heel from off the mat. So you really need to engage your core here. Left foot comes down, bend into that left knee, plant the palms, take your flow. Inhale, plank. Exhale all the way down. Three baby cobras, inhale, upper body lifts. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, push into the feet to rise. Exhale, lower. Last one, inhale up. Exhale, release, downward facing dog. From our down dog, reach your right leg up, keep it straight and squared this time. And as you exhale, tap your right knee towards your outer right shoulder, as high up as you can get it. Inhale, back up, three-legged dog. Exhale, same thing, squeeze, pull it in. Inhale, reach. Exhale, squeeze, bring your knee to center, step it through once more, we're coming back into that low lunge, so the back knee comes down to the floor. 
push down into your feet as you lift up. So make sure tailbone is reaching down, crown of the head is extending up, and you're gonna open the arms into a twist. Left arm forward, right arm back. Still bending into that front knee. Stay here if this is enough, or you can reverse to go further. Right hand towards your left thigh or towards the shin. Left arm reaches up and back. There should be no pinching or no pain in your lower back. If there is, it means you've gone too far. Big breath in, stretch out. And now bring your left hand directly down to the mat. Right arm goes straight up to the sky and you're gonna step your right foot all the way to the back of your mat. So you're in your modified side plank. You might need to move a little bit so that your left knee is under the hip, hip under the shoulder. Squeeze and extend, reach through your top arm a little bit higher. And now see if you can shift your weight forward and maybe hover to float the right leg off the mat. Squeeze into the glutes, flex into the foot. Abdominals are strong and engaged here. And the right foot comes flat to the mat. Bring your right hand towards the back of your head. You're gonna push into the right foot and see if you can pick up the left knee from off the floor. Bring your elbow and your knee together to touch. Hold here for three, two, one. Forearm plank, right forearm comes down, left forearm comes down. Stretch out your legs back behind you. Reach the crown of your head away from your heels. Think of pushing your heels back. Big breath in here. Into your Sphinx pose, hips come down. Lift up through your heart, pull the chest forward. And exhale, release. Extend your arms out in front of you, palms facing in towards one another. You want your feet to be hip width distance apart, hands or shoulder width distance apart. Keep your gaze looking down. I'm just kind of looking up because I'm trying to avoid uh, hitting my microphone. All we're going to do is as you inhale, lift the head, the right arm and the left leg off the mat. Exhale to lower down and let's switch and alternate. Inhale, left arm and right leg. Spread the fingers, spread the toes. Exhale to lower down, two more on each side. Inhale, right arm, left leg up. Exhale, squeeze it down. Inhale, left arm, right leg. Exhale to lower. Last one here. Inhale, right arm, left leg. Lower with control. Left arm, right leg, breathe in. And release, slide your palms back, downward facing dog. Hands shoulder width distance apart, feet are hip width distance apart. Extend your left leg up to the sky, keep it straight and squared. Exhale, tap your knee over towards the left outer arm. Inhale, three like a dog. Exhale, same thing, keep your hips low, squeeze. Inhale, up and back. Exhale, hug it in, bring the knee to center, low lunge. Left foot forward, right knee comes down. Find the alignment in the legs and really push into the feet in order to lift up through your spine. Arms go up and then open twist. Right arm forward, left arm back. And maybe you're hanging out here, pressing the hips forward and down, or maybe you reverse. Left hand down, right arm up. And just see what you're able to catch a hold of, what feels the most secure. Big breath in as you lean and right hand comes down to the floor. Left arm reaches up to the sky. Find your modified side plank. So you're stepping your left foot all the way towards the back of your mat. One shoulder stacks directly over the other. Squeeze into the glutes and see if you can pick up the left foot from off the ground. Trying to get it at the same height as your hip. Flexing into the foot as if you were kicking against the wall behind you. Bring the left foot back down to the mat. Bring your left hand behind the back of your head. Push down into the left foot. See if you can pick up the right knee from off the mat and bring your elbow and your knee together to touch. You're really gonna feel the obliques working here. Hold for three, two, 
One, forearm plank, left forearm down, step the right foot back, right forearm down. Try to find one long line from the crown of your head all the way to your tailbone, and then from your tailbone all the way to your heels. Reach the crown of your head forward, shrug your shoulders away from your ears. Big breath in here. Sphinx pose, inhale to lift up. And instead of doing those locust or half locust raises, we're gonna come into our full locust pose this time. So lowering down, reach your arms forward. If you know your spine needs a little bit more support, you can make this easier by reaching your arms back. So your choice, coming up, locust, pick everything up from off the floor. Keep your gaze down so the back of the neck is long. Try to squeeze. Flex through the toes, inhale, stretch out longer, and release, downward facing dog. All right, from this down dog, extend your right leg up to the sky, go ahead and bend your knee, open up your hip here. And we're gonna take like a figure eight shape. So keeping the knee bent, you're gonna trace and try to bring your right knee over towards your left elbow, right elbow, and then swing it back to complete that figure eight shape as you open and revolve through that hip. Twice more here, forward, left elbow, right elbow, and complete that loop. Last one, inhale forward, left, right, up and back, straighten the right leg, high lunge. Right foot between your palms. Make sure your feet are hip width distance apart as you lift up. You wanna bend generously into that front knee so the knee is reaching towards the second and third toe. Sink your hips down nice and low. Lengthen your spine, inhale. Exhale, tilt forward, reach your arms back, palms facing down. Inhale, come back up. So my legs are not moving, upper body only. Exhale to tilt, diagonal line. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, lean it forward, hold here. Shrug your shoulders away from the mat. Lift your palms up a little higher, bend your front knee a little more. Come all the way back up to center and let's open to warrior two. So back foot spins parallel to the shorter edge of your mat. Right knee bends and you're squeezing that right knee open. Let's reverse, left hand down, right arm up and back. Big side body stretch. Inhale to warrior two. Let's straighten the front leg. You might wanna bring your back foot in a couple inches, triangle pose, send your hips back, right arm down, left arm up. See if you can roll your left shoulder back and maybe even look up towards your top thumb. So up towards the left hand. You really do need to lean back a lot more than you think you need to. You can practice doing triangle pose against the wall. You would want everything to be touching the wall. Start to look down at the floor, coming to easy twist. Left hand down, left heel up, right arm up, inhale. Hang out here if you'd like or move into your side plank pose. See if you can keep your right knee lifted up and maybe even extend your right leg up. So like a star pose variation of side plank. Inhale and regular plank pose. Take your flow, exhale, chaturanga, maybe halfway. Inhale, cobra or upward dog. And we all meet downward facing dog. Lifting your hips up and back. Catch your breath. And we'll set up for the second side. Left leg reaches up, bend your left knee, open up that hip. And we're doing that figure eight shape three times. So come forward, left knee goes towards the right elbow, the left elbow, finish that figure eight, lifting up. Twice more, right elbow, left elbow, right corner, left corner. Last one, squeeze it in, circle it round, lift the hips, straighten your left leg and find high lunge. Left foot forward, feet are hip width distance apart. This will help a lot with your balance. 
So you want to make sure that both hip bones and both shoulders are facing directly forward towards the top of your mat, arms reaching up. So the arms are an extension of your spine that stretch you up a little taller. Exhale, tilt forward, diagonal line. Left knee is still bent a lot. Inhale, lift. And exhale, tilt, reach the arms back. One more here, inhale up and ex exhale, tilt to hold here. See if you can bend your left knee even more, cut that left hip back so you're still square to the top of the mat. Lift the shoulders away from the floor, come all the way back up, open to warrior two. So right foot spins parallel to the short edge of your mat, shoulders stay stacked over your hips, gaze forward towards your left hand, Sink a little lower and reverse. Right hand down, left arm up. Back to center. Triangle pose. So you might want to narrow your stance just a little bit. Hips move back. Slide that left hand down. Reach your right arm up. So again, think of really rolling that right shoulder back and almost like you're leaning your chest way back. Maybe looking up towards that top thumb. Slow down your breath. Look down to the floor, easy twist, transitioning into your side plank pose. Right hand down, right heel up, left arm up, and maybe hang out here or you roll to the outer edge of your right foot and see if you can keep that left leg, whoop, <laughs> keep that left leg lifted up as much as possible. So falling or wavering, totally normal. Take one big breath and find your plank pose. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. From our downward facing dog, let's reach the right leg up to the sky. Keep it straight and squared. And we're gonna go right away to a high lunge again here. So foot goes forward between the hands, push into the feet, lift on up. So from this high lunge, we're just going to go into our warrior three. Choose any option with the arms that works for you. So they can be reaching back, reaching to the sides, reaching forward. I like to do a little cactus shape variation here, bending at the elbows. Try to lift the elbows away from the ground if you're doing this one. And at most, you're parallel to the floor. Extend out nice and long. And you're gonna come up to stand, bring your left knee up with you. So squeezing into the hip flexors, hands at the heart. So squeeze to lift that left knee up as high as you can get it. Come into a twist, right hand towards your left shin, left arm opens up towards the back of the mat. So your hips face forward, but shoulders are facing the side of your mat. Now tricky transition here, can you come into a floating half moon? So your chest is gonna stay facing exactly where it is, but release the left leg so it can open up to the side and start to tilt towards the front of your mat. And you can always let the right fingertips come down to the floor for support, but if possible, see if you can keep your right hand hovering about a foot off the mat. You're gonna feel the muscles in your right leg work super hard here. Squeeze the muscles in the back leg to lift it up a little higher, inhale. Come all the way up to stand, chair pose. Big toes together, heels apart, sink your weight down. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale, straighten the legs and fold. Halfway lift, flat back. Exhale, plant the palms. You can step or hop back to chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Three breaths here. 
draw your navel in towards your low back. Second side, left leg rises, keep it straight and squared. High lunge, push into the feet, lift on up. Find something to focus on that is not moving. We're coming from here into our warrior three. Any variation with their arms that you'd like. Think of pushing off of that back leg and squeeze into your glutes and hamstrings to keep that leg lifted and engaged. Try to minimize any rounding in your upper back so it's almost like you're doing a little back bend, like a little cobra pose. Take one more breath to lengthen out here and we'll come up to stand. Bring your right knee in with you. Squeeze into the hip flexors to lift that knee up as high as it'll go and set up for your twist. Left hand to your shin, right arm reaches towards the back of your mat as you pull that right shoulder back to open up a little more. Try to avoid digging your toes into the floor. And when you're ready, transition into your half moon pose so the arms stay out to the side. Swing with control your right leg back and up and start to tilt. Left fingertips might need to come down to the floor for extra support, or you might be able to just play around with keeping it hovering off the mat. The key to this pose is in how much you're able to engage the muscles in your back leg and also how steady you can have your gaze. Into chair pose, come all the way to stand. Feet together, bend your knees, drop your hips low. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale to fold. Halfway lift, flat back. Exhale, plant the palms, step or hop back. Inhale, lift up. And send your hips back. All right, so before we start to wind things down, we have one last little power pose here to come into. Reach your right leg up to the sky, bend your right knee and open up your hip. You're welcome to hang out here. There's already a lot going on or you're welcome to come into your wild thing. So right toes go all the way back behind you. I'm actively pushing down into both feet to lift the pelvis up and back. Lifting up through your heart. Look down to the mat, carefully transition back to your downward facing dog. And we'll right away go to the other side. Left leg rises. Bend the left knee, open the hip. Maybe stay here or your left toes go back behind you. You lean on your right hand. Left arm reaches up and back. Push into both feet to lift your pelvis up. Lift up through the heart. Deep breaths, downward facing dog. Reach your chest to your thighs. And let's come to a pigeon pose. Right leg rises. Bring your right knee behind your right wrist. Square off the pelvis. Stretch your back leg out behind you a little more. So you really wanna make sure you're not leaning on one side more than the other. And then fold on down. So as we start to slow things down, this is your opportunity to take longer, deeper breaths, to invite your body to relax. So can you relax your shoulders and your arms a little more in this pose? Three more deep breaths. Mm. 
And then we'll make our way back, downward facing dog. Setting ourselves up for pigeon pose on the second side. Just create space down that right leg. And then left leg can extend up. Bring your knee behind your wrist. Stretch your right leg back out behind you. Square off the pelvis so you're not rolling on one hip more than the other one before you fold into the pose. It's totally normal for one side to be harder than the other one. Try not to force yourself to have the exact same experience. Just meet your body where it is right now, letting go of judgment and attachment to what you think you should be able to do. There's really no denying reality. We are what we are, and we're so much better off learning to embrace it and working with what we have. I find that I make progress a lot faster actually that way too. And let's go downward facing dog. This is our last downward dog. So make any little final movements and adjustments here that feel good for you. And then our knees will come back down to the floor. You can swing your legs out in front of you. Let's set up for bridge pose, just like what we did at the beginning of class. So feet hip width distance apart. You can relax your arms alongside your body, maybe shrugging your shoulders underneath you just a little bit. Push into your feet, curl tailbone up, lift the hips, the low back and the mid back off the mat. Squeeze your thighs in a little. Push into the big toes. and exhale letting it go so you're welcome to come back into bridge pose or if you'd like you can move into a shoulder stand i'm just going to move more to the center of my mat here so shoulder stand lifting the hips up and you can support yourself with the back of your palms on your lower back or on your hips and then the legs you're trying to stack your ankles over your hips Maybe transitioning into plow pose. And very slowly we'll ease on out. Oh, plow is the absolute hardest pose for my body. So you might be able to stay in it a little bit longer but I just had to come out of it. And we'll come into a laying spinal twist. So you can move your arms out to the sides, move your hips a little to the right and let both knees drop down over to the left. You can always wrap your right thigh over your left one here before the knees drop down. Really slowing things down energetically here. And squeeze to lift your knees back up to center and we'll go twist on the other side. So your hips might need to go a little to the left. Drop your knees over to the right. 
reach out through your left arm, especially trying to keep your shoulder blade on the mat. Unwind, lift your knees back up to center and just see if there's any other little movement or adjustment that needs to happen before you can come into Shavasana, our final relaxation pose. Could be just drawing your knees into your, ba into your belly, coming into happy baby. And we'll start to unwind, extend your arms and your legs out. Give yourself lots of yummy space here. And please don't skip Shavasana. It truly is the most, most important part of your practice. This is your body's opportunity to really process all the work you've done. So give yourself full permission to unwind, to relax, and to do absolutely nothing just for a few minutes. Slow, steady breaths. Begin to breathe a little deeper so that you can wake back up slowly and gently, wiggling fingers and toes, turning your head side to side. Stretch out your arms up and overhead, full body stretch here. And we'll roll to one side, push your arms into the floor to lift up and take a seat. Sitting up nice and tall, close your eyes. Draw your hands together at the front of your heart. And really lengthen the crown of your head up, roll your shoulders back. And using mental awareness, see if you can scan along your body and feel the activation that's happened from our practice together. This full body toning to re-energize and revitalize every single cell. And see if you can find at least one thing to be really grateful for and really proud of. Even though this was a difficult class, just because a practice is hard does not mean we have to be hard on ourselves. 
So give yourself thanks and show your body some love for all the work it puts in for you. And we'll close with one ohm. Inhale to chant. Big breath in. Oh. Namaste. Thank you so much, yogis, for doing this full body toning vinyasa flow practice. I would love to know how this went for you um, and if you'd like more of these longer classes, uh, more vinyasa flow practices on my channel, just let me know, leave me a comment down below and definitely please do subscribe to my channel. It's a wonderful, easy way to support free yoga on the internet. And I have a new mobile app now. So if you go to the app store on your phone and search yoga with Cassandra, you'll be able to see my mobile app. So it has lots of exclusive content. You can download classes, watch offline. You can schedule classes in our calendar, use our journal. Anyway, there's lots of goodies there and there's a seven day free trial. So definitely check it out. A ton, ton, ton of work went into it. All right, that's it for now. And and I hope to practice again with you soon. Namaste.